What do these trees in India and this geothermal plant in Iceland have in common? They both capture carbon dioxide with the help of green technology. Will these two innovations help us clean up the CO2 from our atmosphere? This drone flying over Telangana, India helps to tackle climate change. The seed copter plants trees from the sky. The afforestation project aims to plant 1 billion trees in India by 2030. Each drone carries up to 10 kilograms of seed balls, with 4 to 5,000 seeds. It flies over a dedicated area where the seed balls are dropped into the soil. Then the seeds are supposed to grow into trees. Aerial seeding aims to create new forests or strengthen damaged ones. Suraj Pedi is co-founder of Marut Drones, the startup behind the technology used by Seedcopter. So governments and community have been trying for many years to tackle through afforestation activities, but it is limited because of the traditional methods that has been adapted and because of the manual involvement. But Seedcopter breaks this and makes the afforestation activities faster scalable and backed by data using technology. Drones can plant way more trees than people could. One drone can cover over 10 hectares every day, dispersing over 10,000 seeds. That's the work of 40 people. Before the aerial seeding can take place, the drones conduct a survey of the territory. After that, the seed balls are prepared by local communities. Trees are important for keeping the planet's rising temperatures at bay. They absorb the primary greenhouse gas emitted through human activities, carbon dioxide. Plus, they produce oxygen for all living creatures. But each year, up to 15 billion trees are cut down worldwide to clear land for agriculture, livestock grazing and timber. Therefore, new trees are needed now more than ever. Seedcopter wants to be part of the change. Seedcopter's technology makes tree planting on a large scale possible. Another advantage, drones can reach areas inaccessible to humans. India is a very, very varied geography and terrain, like deserts in Rajasthan or mangroves in West Bengal. So there are many regions where people are unable to reach. So there are not many activities that are going on at present. Seedcopter can reach these unreachable areas with ease. Seedcopter's job isn't done with the planting of the trees. The seedlings are being closely monitored to ensure the forests grow in a healthy way. We are also providing, uh, creating data and intelligence solutions to maximize the efficiency at which these seedlings grow. We are building a platform to monitor the plant growth like continuously and assist these seedlings with the necessary parameters that are needed. We also estimate the carbon sequestration across years and map it accordingly. With the technology at hand, Seedcopter's success rate of planting trees is high. However, it will take time for the trees to grow and actually capture CO2, as green IT expert Chris Adams points out. If you think about um, emissions, like, like the fact that we're, we're emitting things right now, it might take 40 years for a tree to grow, or even it will even take a certain amount of time for that tr a tree to actually grow to the point where it's actually uh, sequestered enough carbon. At this speed of afforestation, we would need several planets covered in trees to capture all the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Or several of these technology plants. 7,000 kilometres from India, a Swiss company is fighting climate change by permanently removing CO2 from the air. Climeworks uses a technology called direct air capture. It works like a big vacuum cleaner, sucking out CO2 from the atmosphere. In 2017, their first air capture plant was launched, capturing 900 tonnes of CO2. The captured CO2 was then used in agriculture, for example, as a plant fertiliser. Fifteen of their machines are currently in operation in Europe. The biggest plant was installed in Iceland in September 2021. How does direct air capture work? Eight collector containers extract carbon dioxide with high-tech filters and fans. Once the carbon dioxide is separated using heat, it gets mixed with water. Then it travels deep underground, where the carbon cools and solidifies. There, the captured CO2 can no longer contribute to global warming. 
Through this process, the plant, called orca, can trap and sequester 4,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide per year. It's located just outside of Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. It's the ideal place for running a plant like this. Iceland's unique geography and geology provide both hydro and geothermal resources that make renewable energy cheap. After all, if it ran on fossil fuels, that wouldn't make any sense. Our technology runs on renewable energy only. Why is this important? Well, if you are in the business of cleaning up the atmosphere, you have to make sure that you don't emit more in the process than you remove. And obviously, renewable energy is the key to this. Currently, facilities like Orca only negate a small percentage of global emissions because carbon capture is expensive. Here, it costs at least $600 to capture one metric tonne of carbon dioxide, since heating the air takes a lot of energy. Kavia Madu from the University of Freiburg in Germany has been conducting research on the feasibility of direct air capture technologies. The advantage is that you take out the excess of carbon dioxide that is bad for the earth out of the air. Disadvantage is that it's a very new technology. You still need a lot of development that needs to happen. And this technology is not made out of air, so to speak. You need energy. You need land, you need a material such as steel, cement. To extract all of these resources and to provide the land, this is a big investment that we will need and that for a moment, it is a disadvantage. Furthermore, the process is energy intensive. Many countries run on electricity sources that would create more emissions than the system could store. It does not make sense to put something like this when your energy makes us not green, because then the net saving is always less. The net capture would be less. Shifting to renewable energy instead of burning fossil fuels is one of the key factors in fighting global warming. But in this mission, our planet needs every tool available, from afforestation drones to direct air capture plants. These technologies play a vital part in cleaning up the atmosphere and will bring us one step closer to reaching our climate goals.